Hi, my name is Alvin Alexander, and this is my video series, 12 Things Java Developers Should Know About Scala. This is part two of a series, demonstrating how Scala feels like a dynamic scripting language. When we say that Scala feels like a scripting language, it's because I could type things like this, where I say val h equal double quote, hello, double quote, and I don't have to specify anywhere that h is a string. Scala is able to infer that. I can then show that Scala can do the same thing with an int. And I can do the same thing with a uh, double and say val d equals 2.0. And again, Scala determines that the type is a double. Another example of how Scala can feel like a scripting language is when you start mixing some types. And, and I'll stick with the basic types here, but we can say val x equals 1, val y equals uh, 2.0. And then I can say val z equals x plus y. And again, notice that I didn't specify any types in any of those expressions, but Scala was able to determine that x is an end, y is a double, and then z is also a double. This works in other ways. For instance, if I type uh, val name equals Alvin Alexander, I can then say um, val, uh, let's say names, equal name dot split, and I'll split it on that blank space. And you can see, again, I didn't have to declare the type of names, uh, but Scala was able to determine that it's an array of string. And that's pretty cool. We can keep doing this with other types. For instance, a list of integers. Scala is smart enough that if you mix elements in a collection like a list, it can usually infer the correct type. Uh, in this case, when I hit Enter, you'll see that as I added 1 and 2.0 to the list, Scala inferred that this was a list of type double. And that's not bad. That's probably what you want in a lot of places. But what you can do, if you want to override that, is you can declare your own type. So notice that this is a similar expression, except in this area I'm saying what I really want is a list of number. And this is a way in Scala that you can override the type that Scala would like to infer. So as you can see, that expression results in a list of number. It's not very often you need to do that, but of course it's good to have it when you need it. I just showed a number of examples of type inference in Scala, which is one of the main things that makes Scala feel like a scripting language. I guess it's that and the var and the val are the, are the main things that make Scala feel like a scripting language. Other things you can do or other things in the language that make it feel like a scripting language or some conveniences like this where you can create a range from uh, starting at zero with 10 elements and you know that gives you that result. Again note that I didn't have to say it was an int or an array event. Uh, Scala infers that but that's not really the point here. What I want to show is that you can do other things with this and in that example I just went from uh, zero to ten by two. Again that returns an array event but a cool thing you can do with that you go back to 0 to 10, you can say something like, uh, let me create a list of, let me turn that into a list of double, basically, by using the map method. And you can see that, excuse me, I said list, but you can see that's an array of double. And the way that works is the map method applies your functions, every element in the collection. So what I did was I said, let, let me go ahead and multiply every element in the collection by 1.0, and then that returned this uh, new array. So it goes from 0.0, .0 through 9.0 in this case. And of course, you can use any other multiplier there that you want. So it could be 1.5 or something like that if you wanted to do that. Another thing that makes Scala feel like a scripting language is something called a tuple or tuple. Although it's not really a collection, I like to think of a tuple as being a collection or bag or container of miscellaneous things. And in this case, I'm creating a variable named stuff that it contains an int and a string. I find that this is really useful in a lot of things. Like if you have a method, uh, let's say it's called get user info, and you want to return three different things from it, but you don't want to create a temporary class for those things, you can do that with a tuple. And in this case, I'm returning three things from get user info, a string, an int, and a double.
for me, this turns out to be really convenient because then I can return this tuple from a method and then assign that to three values, uh, name, age, and weight, all at one time. Again, without having to create some kind of fake temporary class. You can see here in the REPL that I have those three values, but I'll go ahead and show it further by, uh, I'll type in name, age, and weight here, so you can, again, see that the values were assigned to those three variables. Like everything else I've shown, a tuple is a feature that lets Scala feel like a nice, light, dynamic scripting language. I'm going to end this video by showing the use source code for a small script that I wrote, and this script uh, just prints the last 20 messages from my mailbox. And I'm not going to say anything about it, I just want to show it here uh, so you can look at it, you can pause the video. And then, again, the purpose of this entire video is to show how Scala feels, looks and feels like a scripting language. And I think this short script shows that off. So feel free to pause here if you'd like and just check out the source code. Thank you for watching this video. This is the second part of my series, 12 Things a Java Developer Should Know About Scala. And in this part, I showed how Scala feels like a dynamic scripting language. My name is Alvin Alexander. I wrote the Scala cookbook, and you can find more information at alvinalexander.com. Thank you.